Bismillah walhamdulillah my dear sisters and my brothers assalamu alaikum warahmatullah Sometimes I receive a question a very probably one line or maybe half line question in the group and the answer is not that simple and easy So sometimes it requires more to answer that question just like is the case today in this particular question I received this from a lady and uh, her question is as such she goes uh, I want to know how important it is to recite the Quran with tajweed do we have to apply the tajweed rules when we recite the Quran the later on she explains that her mother uh, an old lady doesn't know the rules of recitation of the Quran and was wondering if she was sinning in doing that or not obviously i could have said a and b and that is the end but actually it takes more because later on when i posted the answer in the group a gentleman sent another question so to speak like a follow up to this one and he goes uh, what about the singing of the quran because allah has said in the quran waratil alqurana tartila So here is first my uh, initial answer and then I will add to that. So I answered saying it is not important at all. When the Quran was revealed, it didn't have all the rules of reading or the vowels that we have today. Anything that you've heard of or about the tajweed are 100% man-made rules to ensure that people keep reading the Quran as they I e the scholars see it. When they couldn't control how people read the Quran, they invented the idea of the 10 different readings methods, qira'at uh, al-ashr. And then I said, Allah revealed one Quran with one recitation. It is humans who could not agree on one form. So, to accommodate every possible way of reciting the Quran that was present in the third century, they invented again those ten recitations. Then I said, as long as you understand what's written and what's wanted from you, The, the, the rest doesn't really matter, i.e. you read with the proper law, rules or not, it doesn't matter. Allah, I carried on, Allah ordered us to ponder and study the Quran, not become Michael Jackson's in its recitation, i.e. you sing it well. There is not a single ayah in the Quran where Allah orders us to read it properly or, or with the tajweed rules or singing it in a way as they do today. Which uh, and tajweed itself, I said, uh, literally means quality. Al-Jawda is the high quality. So the tajweed is all these rules is to make people read the Quran with the highest quality of Arabic possible. Therefore, don't worry about the pronunciations or vowels or what those uh, between converted commas, sheikhs who make a living by compiling the reading or by complicating the reading of Allah's book. Concentrate on understanding, then applying, and you are doing very well. And then again, I said, then someone uh, added, while we are on the topic, would you be kind enough to explain the above ayah, please? And then that is, وَرَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا It is the second part of the question, i.e. Rattil al-Qur'an tartila that has called for this brief talk. When you look in the translation of this particular ayah, you will find a different point of views of the people that translate the Qur'an. Some of them, they say, and chant the Qur'an in measure, i.e. sing it in measure. Other ones, they say, and recite the Qur'an properly in a measured way. And re- again, and recite the Qur'an slowly and distinctly. Again, and recite the Qur'an clearly with tartil, i.e. in a distinct and measured tone. Another one says, and recite the Qur'an in slow, measured, rhythmic tones. The other one says, and recite the Qur'an with measured recitation. The other one says, and recite the Qur'an aloud in a slow, pleasant tone and style and again the last one again and recite the quran in a distinct recitation etc etc et i just brought you like seven or eight of these examples now 
if Allah said رَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا and it meant one thing why do we have different points of views these are in English and the same thing also in Arabic there are different views of the scholars on what exactly Allah means and obviously the problem is it's when people try to explain what Allah means from an isolated ayah and I've already explained this before to give you an idea about how you should interact with the Quran I will say this fast can mean different things depending on the situation. For example, if you are taking a highway code, I'm going to take an international example, you learning how to drive, or maybe teaching somebody how to drive, or maybe have bought a book on the highway code. Now, on the highway code, when they tell you that the speed limit within a suburban place where people live is 30 miles or 30 kilometers per hour. So later on when they say if you go fast they understand that you the reader know that the, the, the highest speed limit is 30. Meaning if you go 30 first, uh, 31 miles an hour or 31 kilometers an hour you're going fast. And at which point you will get a ticket, either you're doing whatever. So fast, they understand that you understand what they mean. Now, if for example now, they are still talking to you how you drive. But now they're talking about the highway, the modern way, where the speed limit is 70 miles or maybe 130 kilometers per hour. Now, when they say if you're going fast on the motorway, they know that you understand from them that they mean that when you are going above the 70 miles an hour or the 130 kilometers an hour, if you are doing 140, you're going fast. You cannot now, when you are driving in a suburban place, go at 50 kilometers or 50 miles an hour and you go to the judge and tell him, no, I was not going fast because the highway code says if you don't go beyond 70, then you're not. So because now the, the judge is going to tell you, look, that law applies when you are in that circumstance, that situation, and the other 70 and 130 applies when you are on the motorway. Well, the same thing applies in the Quran. Allah to tell us one thing, we have to look through the Quran, its entirety, the whole of the Quran, to see what Allah means when He mentions a term and how He uses it in Al Quran. Yet our scholars, and it's sad, really sad, that they isolate one ayah and they explain it literally like dictionary and without consulting the other parts of the Qur'an where Allah uses the same term uh, elsewhere. And this is just another example. Now, I have to mention here that Allah never meant for his messenger to become a vocalist, like someone who sings, when it comes to reading the Qur'an, and here is why. When you look at the ayah, you find that the sequence of what Allah says and what those translators or those who explain the Qur'an in Arabic want or will say that he means. Look at it this way. When Allah called on his messenger, because this waratil al-Qur'an tartila is in sort al-Muzammil, and I will come and speak more about this term as al-Muzammil. When Allah called on his messenger, Ya ayyuha al-Muzammil, and al-Muzammil is the surah number 73. Now, when Allah calls on Al-Muzammil, our historians, the historians and the commentators, those who explain the Qur'an and speak of the Qur'an and so on and so forth, said that after the messenger received the visit of Jibreel in the cave, the messenger then rushed home and hid himself under a heavy garment at home. So, Allah rushed out and called him. Ya ayyuha al-muzammil, you who is hiding under the garment, and then the surah carries on. I'll get back to this a little bit later. This is absolutely untrue that the messenger, after receiving the revelation, he went home and scared. Because why would Allah freak out his messenger? Allah knows how we humans are weak and, and fragile, right? Why would Allah put the messenger through that so that the messenger goes home sweaty, scared, and everything? Why would he do that? Okay? But that is not what took place, and I will reveal this later on. 
As I said, for one, the messenger never ever ran away from Jibril and hid under a blanket. Because when Jibril appeared to the messenger, he did not appear to him as an angel, as they say, like uh, the hadith says he's got 600 wings and things like that. Jibril is not an angel to have wings and all that kind of stuff. Jibril is a completely different breed of creation and I've already covered this talk. Jibril is not an angel. Please go back to it. It's on YouTube, on Islam Pep Talk. So the messenger when received, when he received Jibril, Jibril came to the messenger in the most calming manners. If Miriam, a woman who received Jibril inside a temple, Miriam was all alone in a temple. Jibril came to her in whatever form he came, the spirit that he came, and then materialized and morphed into a human being. If Miriam did not freak out from Jibril, how come the messenger freaks out? Who is the man here? Is it the messenger of Allah or is it Miriam? If Miriam didn't freak out, then it means that Jibril came to her in a very calming manner. And the same thing for the messenger. So the messenger never ever ran out, ran away from Jibril to hide under garment and things like that. Furthermore, they also, I mean the scholars, historians and things like that, state that Jibril appeared to the messenger in when he was running away from the Khar Hira, uh, which is at the very huge top of a mountain. It was night. I'm telling you what they say in the books, okay? Because I don't believe in all that. The Quran doesn't say that Allah gave, made the messenger a messenger in the cave. No, no, no. The Quran speaks completely different. That's why the Quran is ignored and isolated because the Quran talks about complete different issues altogether. You see, they tell you after Jibril appeared as a man in the cave, the messenger rushed out all scared. And you know what? If you have not been to Mecca for Hajj or Umrah or whatever, I ask you or I invite you to go on the internet and type where is Ghar Hira, where is the cave of Hira where the messenger received the revelation. They will show you a picture. I've st I stood up personally under the huge mountain. It's a very unfriendly, dangerous mountain. Meaning, if you're standing at the top of the mountain and you come down running, you will fall. You will slip, you will fall and you're gonna break your face. I guess guarantee you that. Add to that that they said that the messenger, when he was running down the hill at night, Jibril appeared to him in all his 600 wings. And then they say, if Jibril spread one wing, he would cover all the skies that are above. I ask you, if an angel has got 600 wings, how did the messenger see the other 599 if one wing would hide everything? And it was night and it was dark. But of course, they tell you the story and they made it part of Islam. If this story was important, then Allah would have made it part of the Quran. But Allah didn't. What also that means? It means that this story is actually fictional. Absolutely, it was written some 200 years later by Ibn Ishaq, whose father was a Christian and his lineage, his parents and everybody else was Christian. Ibn Ishaq was, uh, came to Islam when he was young and stayed in Islam and only Allah knows why and the reason why. But all his family are Christians and not only regular Christians. They were scholars in Christianity. Ibn Ishaq, in writing the life of the messenger, used so many things that relate to Jesus, son of Mary, and he adapted them to fit the persona of the messenger of of Allah. Now, this theory does not stand the ground at all. And as I said, for the simple fact that Allah wouldn't call the messenger Al-Muzammil and also in Surah number 74, it's called Al-Muddathir it has the same meaning. So to them, Al-Muzammil is the one who is hidden under a heavy garment and Al-Muddathir is the one also who is hiding under the heavy garment. And the two surahs were not uh, revealed one after the other. They were revealed well, maybe one today, a little bit later, maybe next week or things like that. All right. Now, it is common belief that the sequence of the surah in the Quran today 
are different from when they were revealed. What I mean by that? If you look, for example, right now, you open the book of the Quran, you will find Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha is the first surah in Al-Quran. But they say the order of its revelation, it is number five. Of course, there are contradictory hadiths that say also that it was revealed in Al-Madina. Years later. And the scholars to kind of like work away between uh, it is revealed in Mecca and the other time is in Al-Madina. They invented the story that Al-Fatiha was revealed twice. Of course, this is not the first time that they do this, but however. Now, if you look at surah number two, Al-Baqarah, which they translate as the cow, but it's not the cow. Allah is not going to name the Quran after an animal, okay? They say the cow, when you're looking at your Quran, it is number two, right? But in the order of revelation, Al-Baqarah is the surah number 87, so 86 surahs were, rece were revealed before Al-Baqarah, which was revealed in year 2 in al Madina. That is almost 15 years or 16 years after Islam started. So as you can see now, how the Quran was also um, uh, arranged in the book today, all this is because of arguments of scholars that they held in the 3rd century and so many different versions and all that kind of stuff. The other thing that to make us really realize what's going on here is I'm going to translate to you the beginning of the two surahs, Al-Muzammil number 73 and Al-Muddathir number 74. And you will realize that there is something not quite fine with these two the arrangement of these two surahs. What they say is Al-Muzammir is the man who is wrapped in a garment. Al-Muddathir is also the man who is wrapped in a garment. Meaning that the messenger was in a garment and Allah used different wordings to mean the same thing. And this is not true at all. But for argument's sake, let's go with that. They say, and I'm going to just recite the English, okay? Now, Al-Muzzamil, that's surah number 73. Here is how it goes. You who is wrapped in garments, stand to pray all night, except a little. Half of it, or a little less than that. Or add to it, i.e. to the night prayer, a little, and recite the Quran with measured recitation. Soon, shall we send down to you a very heavy message, i.e. the Qur'an. Surely, the Salat by night is more intense in performance and to make speech more upright. For during the day, you are over-occupied with worldly duties. Now, off to Surah number 74, and that is Al-Muddathir, which again, according to our scholars, was revealed just after Al-Muzammil, just what I read, that's 73. So let's take a look at what Allah orders His Messenger, or His newly appointed Messenger. Again, you who is wrapped in garments, arise and warn, and your Lord grandify and your clothing purify and keep away from the idols and do not boost for doing good and for the sake of your Lord observe patience in normal circumstances if we are to believe our scholars or the scholars of the 3rd century and their arrangement of the Quran then the order of the above two surahs are upside down because in normal circumstances, Allah would tell him, you who is wrapped in garments, arise and go warn people, and your Lord grandify, and your clothing purify, and because you are just like from your own people, ya Muhammad, and you used to like your people, give some importance to the idols, then you must keep away from the idols, and do not boost for doing good, and for the sake of your Lord, observe patience, right? And then Allah would, in the next surah, command him, you who is wrapped, stand to pray all night, except a little, half of it, or less than that, and then recite the Qur'an, because we are going to send to you a heavy talk, that is a Qur'an. You see what I mean? First, 
teach the messenger his job, how to stay pure and clean and everything, and then order him to perform salat. But in our Quran today, what the scholar says, it's the other way around. It's perform salat, do this, do this, and then later on, Allah reveals to him, your Lord grandify and your clothing purify and keep away from the idols and things like that. I could have answered this question with this very few words and that's that, right? But I don't want to do that. I want to share with you and show you how you can find out from the Quran what Allah truly wants from you, what He wants from you. Because if these two surat, i.e. 73 and 74, if they were truly revealed right after the Messenger of Allah received the Qur'an and met Jibreel, as you know, in the cave and all, why would Allah command His Messenger to stand at night and perform a lot of salat? After all, we were or we are told that Salat was prescribed in year 10 when the messenger went to heaven. So what kind of Salat is Allah talking about? And what kind of Salat that in the first few days of Islam, Allah tells the messenger to stand at night and pray and pray half of night. You know what half of a night you, you stand in? And also, if there was not enough Quran to recite, what would the messenger do? What kind of, uh, this surah was revealed in the the very, very early days of Islam, barely was like 50 ayah. When Allah tells him, recite the Quran a lot, half of it, or a little bit, or recite more, and things like that, there is nothing of the Quran. And now you can start to see how fishy, how there is something fishy in the whole thing at all. Because if the Salat was not yet prescribed, and was to be prescribed 10 years from now, why would Allah order his messenger to perform something that was not already, that didn't exist at that time there? You see, Allah in different parts of the Quran had ordered the messenger not to worry about either memorizing the Quran or worry about its ordering, because, uh, the arrangement, i.e. Uh, which ayah comes first and so on and so forth. Because Allah had promised him, i.e. the messenger in Surah Al-Qiyamah, that is the surah number 75, from ayah 16 to 19. He has made a promise to his messenger. Listen to what Allah says and how he says it. I'm going to just say it to the English translation, okay? Number 16, the ayah number 16 from the uh, Surah 75. Do not move your tongue during revelation for reciting it, i.e. the Quran, to receive it in a hurry. When Jibril used to bring the Quran, I will speak how Jibril would bring the Quran, but when Jibril used to bring the Quran to the messenger, as Jibril would read for the messenger to hear, the messenger used to compete with Jibril. For example, yeah, I'm just going to give an example. If Jibril comes to the messenger and tells him, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, before Jibril has finished the prophet's he goes like this, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Why does he do that? He was in a, uh, kind of like afraid to forget what Jibril told him. Just, <laughs> it happens to you, if you're, you're having an exam or someone is trying to teach you something for a quick, as soon as they say it, you straightway say it right after they did. Why? To memorize it. So Allah tells the messenger, do not move your tongue during revelation of the Quran when Jibreel is reciting it to you so that you can receive it in a hurry, i.e. you memorized in a hurry. It surely is upon as its collection, i.e. in your heart and then in your book. Allah is saying the message, don't worry about it. We send Jibreel with you, with the Quran, and I also guarantee at the same time, you don't need any effort to memorize the Quran, it already comes automatically. The moment Jibreel researches the Quran, it's printed on the messenger's heart. He'll never ever forget it. Again, not like some hadith that said the messenger forgot some hadith, uh, some Quran, and then somebody else was reciting it, and the messenger said, oh, Allah have mercy on him. I had forgotten one ayah from the Quran, and that guy reminded me. This is a lie. Allah has promised to the messenger that he will not forget any Quran that Allah teaches him. But anyhow, then Allah says, it surely is upon us, it's collection of the Quran in your heart and in a book, and upon us, i.e. Allah, is uh, the relaying to you. Now, uh, ayah number 18, so when we have recited 
the Quran through Jibreel to you, then you follow its recitation as instructed. I.e. when Jibreel says Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen the messenger will say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen the messenger cannot change the order of the words or put this part before the other part he cannot he's not capable and then Allah tells him then it surely is upon us to make it clear that's why there is no tafsir of the Quran from the messenger as you can see the procedure is really clear and simple here is the formula how the Quran reached the Prophet Muhammad Allah has mercy on him and all his brothers Allah tells Jibreel what he wants him to deliver to his messenger Jibreel makes its way to the messenger on to his heart and delivers the Quran to the messenger as he received it from Allah nothing added and nothing deleted and Allah has in many ayat of the Quran praised Jibreel about his how reliable he is and how trustworthy Jibreel is with Allah's message to all the messengers that Jibreel is the most reliable of all creatures to deliver Allah's message the messenger then learns the Quran from Jibreel just as Jibreel taught him without adding anything to the Quran not in the number of words or order of words or how it is read the messenger receives a message and delivers the message to us humans as he received it Allah ensures that Jibreel teaches the messenger and teach to the messenger Jibreel did as Allah said Allah says in the Quran in the meaning he has i.e. the messenger has been taught by one i.e. Jibreel with a mighty power so Jibreel is extremely powerful Allamahu shadeedul quwa his Jibreel is not only powerful he's extremely powerful in the power that he has now back to the singing of the Quran Allah hasn't certainly sung the Quran to Jibreel Allah didn't say to Jibreel Jibreel come here take the, this uh, Quran to Muhammad Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen and then Jibreel uh, will remember the Quran will take the Quran and then will remember the melody that Allah says it because if the messenger will sing the Quran or will say it with a melody that melody must come from Jibreel the messenger cannot invent a melody and for Jibreel to say the Quran with a melody Jibreel must have heard it from Allah with a melody and of course that is not true whatsoever Allah didn't sing it to Jibreel Jibreel didn't sing it to our messenger the messenger did not sing it to us and also oh, la ilaha illallah. Look, look, Allah has made it clear in the Quran that the Quran is the word spoken words of Allah and words are spoken not sung Okay, Allah made it extremely clear in the Quran as in Surah At-Tawbah, that is the Surah number 9, the Ayah number 6, where Allah says in the meaning, you see, he told his messenger that when you are in a battle and one of the mushriks, the idolaters who is fighting you, comes to you and says, I want to listen to the Quran, here is the instruction of Allah to the messenger. And if any one of the mushriks, i.e. those who worship others with Allah, okay, seeks your protection, give him protection until he listens to the word of Allah. Then let him reach his place of safety once he has finished listening to the word of Allah. Let them go back to wherever it is that they feel safe. And then Allah says to the messenger, that is because they are a people who do not know that what they are fighting comes from Allah. The above ayah from the Quran takes away from the messenger any ability to sound like a poet or speak in rhymes or as many du'as and hadith make it seem, okay? The reason that, you see, there is always something called the reason behind the reason. If Allah hadn't ordered the, his messenger to sing the Qur'an in Salat or when reciting it to people, you see, if Allah had ordered the messenger to read the Quran with a melody 
Then when the messengers go, the messenger goes to Quraysh, he will have to read it to them in melody. And then the Quraysh would make great fun of him. Yeah, Muhammad, now you have become a singer now? What, your Quran is no longer the words of Allah? You have to sing it to us? Talk! Okay, but that is not the case. Okay, Allah did not order His Messenger throughout the Quran to sing Al Quran. Nowhere. And I will tell you later on as to why uh, the Quran is being sung today. Okay, but anyhow. So, back in, the, in those days, in the early days when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to send the Quran to the Messenger, Allah had ordered the Messenger. You see, the Messenger is a tape player. Quraysh come with an argument. Allah straightway reveals the Quran. The Prophet reads. That's why you see a lot in the Quran the term Qul. Say, tell them. I.e. the Messenger is like play to them and the Messenger would just say and whatever he says and that the Quraysh hear through the words of the Messenger what Allah Allah tells them. Now, if someone, you see, why then do we have this idea that the Quran is sung, is, is, is read with a melody? You have like great reciters like uh, Abdul Basta Abdul Samad, whose voice is absolutely fantastic. This man was a singer, he plays the oud, which is like uh, the Arabian guitar and things like that, and he recites the Quran. And now, nowadays, ask anyone, as today's people loved his voice. They didn't care about what he said because it's always the same thing. The Quran, right? Now it's the voice of a Sudais. Today, people are more, uh, the reciters of the Quran, they are just like Michael Jackson and Prince and uh, the Beatles and you, you name them, right? They have their own followers. Why? Because, ask yourself, see, if everybody read the Quran, there wouldn't be a problem. But because everybody sang the Quran, wow, that is now the problem because now you like the voice of this one and you don't like the voice of the other one. You don't hear much about what they're saying. It's far more on how they say it. Okay, but the culprit is again, the culprit is as usual a hadith. The hadith is in Al-Bukhari and they claim it's the messenger of Allah who said it and I am willing to put my hand in fire that the messenger never ever spoke such a thing. If I can see personally in the Quran that Allah never asked the messenger to sing, then the messenger will, himself he is billions, gazillions more versed in Al-Quran than any of us. But anyhow, here is the hadith, okay? They claim that the messenger said this. He is not one of us. He who does not recite melodically the Quran, i.e. recite the Quran with a melody. This is in Al-Bukhari, okay? And there are, of course, in Abu Dawood ibn Majah. But this is the chief. All the other hadiths are more so like this one here, right? And now, the, here, is, here is the kicker. Here is something that will blow your mind. Some of the narrators of this hadith added. So, it no longer is the messenger of Allah. It, they say it's the messenger of Allah who said that he who is uh, he's not one of us, he who doesn't recite the Quran with a melody. Now, somebody else added out of their own head and he says to recite it loudly. He says he meant to recite it loudly. So there you go. You get confused. He he is not one of us. He who does not recite melodically the Quran. Another man comes and he goes, oh, and this man is 200 years later, about 300 years later, okay? He's not somebody who lived with the messenger. And he tells you, oh, by the way, he meant that you recite it loudly. Again, this man made hadith. And I say man made hadith is not from Allah by any stretch, no matter what they say. Always remember on judgment day, the only thing that Allah will tell you is Alam takun ayati tutla alaykum Were not my ayat that are in the Quran Been narrated to you, told, spoken to you On judgment day there is no Bukhari There is no Muslim, there is no books of hadith There are no things of the scholars Not a thing On judgment day the Quran and, and the Quran alone. And that's why on judgment day, the messenger will hold the Quran in one hand and he will point to the believers, to us, and he will complain to Allah, وَقَالَ Rasul, and the messenger will say, My Rabb, my Lord, إِنَّ قَوْمِ Certainly my people have undertaken the Quran 
Quran as abandoned. Not we have not abandoned our Quran. We've made it our mission to abandon the Quran. And you really don't want to be of these people. That's why you want to hang on to the Quran no matter what. Now, the hadith is very dangerous because of this so many innocent believers have been killed and the reason why I'm not saying Muslims because as I said before in the sight of Allah the Jews the Christians anyone who believes in Allah is subservient to Allah in a way or another and that is what we call Muslim okay but politically we are the Muslim the Jews and Christians are not it's wrong it's wrong it's wrong they are subservient to Allah just like you and I we are the believers and that's why Allah throughout the Quran always calls us the believers ya ayyuhalladhina amanu who you who have believed in Muhammad and the Quran now again this man made hadith can't be right because of it clearly issues a death a threat on anyone who is who does not recite the Quran with singing voice is not one of us if he is not one of us that makes him a kafir and uh, according to the jurisprudence that we have a kafir must be killed so there you have it if you don't sing the Quran that's it you are kafir uh, that this is why throughout history many many believers have been killed but not by the Quran but by those man-made hadiths okay here is one hypothesis that I want to emphasize here okay the so-called hadith has been injected by someone somewhere who had no respect for Allah or the words for of Allah and that is the Quran at one point in life there was a booming business of copying and printing and this is in the third century that it was called al-warraqun al-warraqun are the pagers the people who used to copy I'll give you an example you are a scholar that wrote a book in the third century and I am interested in your book now I have two options or three options at least I can ask you to write your book for me another time and duplicate your book for me or I can borrow your book and I duplicate it myself or and this was what was done back then they would take the book to a business person their job was they would copy page per page what, what whatever you take them they will copy it on another book and in the third century this business was so booming that Persians Jews Christians atheists uh, pagans everybody who wanted a business all they had to do find people who could read and write because back then not everybody wrote and write and what all they do is you take your book and you go there now if I am an atheist and you bring me a book and this uh, has happened before those people that will copy the book will put words according to them and so this is why these days when they want to study a book they always bring the different versions and they compare them and they say and why because that's for that thing there the people the printing people at that time there they had this ugly business going on so to me if someone tells me a hadith like this that contradicts the Quran I don't accept it and I have no remorse whatsoever they can call me an enemy of the Sunnah they can call me an enemy of the hadith they can call me I want to destroy the Sunnah they can call me whatever they want to call me I don't care because on judgment day all the Sunnahs all the hadith everything that you know will not wait an Adam, the Quran will be master, and I want to line up with them. Uh, if it, with the Quran, if it is an insult to follow the Quran, it will lie. What kind of believers are we today? So now you get the idea that this man hadith cannot be the messenger has no right he is not one of us who gives him the authority to tell I am not a believer when Allah says if you believe in Allah the last day the books that he revealed the angels as a whole and the last day of judgment Allah considers you a believer and this hadith tell you he is not one of us if you don't sing the Quran if you don't recite it blah 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 Quran Today we spend more time concentrating about the melody with which we read the Quran 
versus what is in the Quran. It's like this uh, driver who knows the highway code, uh, he sings it pretty well, right? But guess what? He is the lousiest driver every time he gets in a car, it's road collision, problems and things like that. How good, how much good is his singing of the highway code gonna do him or her, right? Well, it's the same thing for us today. If the messenger says he is not one of us, the question to ask is, where did he get this from? Where did the messenger get this from? Was it from his head? Certainly not. Was it a revelation from Allah in the Quran? Certainly not. Did Allah reveal to him something out of the Quran, i.e. Allah revealed to him the Quran and something else? Well, certainly not according to the Quran, because according to our, the Sunnah, Ahl Sunnah scholars and the great scholars, no, Allah had revealed to the Messenger two, the, two Wahyain, two revelations, the Quran and the Sunnah. It actually never true, because the Messenger himself, as ordered by Allah in the Quran, openly acknowledges that he is uh, he only follows what has been revealed to him look at this in surah number 6 al an'am in the ayah 106 the messenger says again in the meaning follow allah says follow to the, to the messenger okay follow what has been revealed to you from your lord how much do you need after this right in another surah, surah number 10, that is surah Yunus, in the ayah number 15, Allah says in the translation, when our clear revelations are recited to them, i.e. the Quran is recited to them, those who do not expect to meet us at the time of Quraysh and now and on, they said to the messenger, the, say to the prophet, bring us a different Quran or make some changes to it. Because Quraysh didn't like what the prophet was reciting to them. So they said to him, get us some other Quran. This one we don't like it. Or change something in it just here and there and somewhere else in the quran the messenger almost tampered with the quran yes the, the messenger of allah almost tampered with the quran to please Quraysh. and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says were it not that we had affirmed your stand i.e we protected you you almost you almost you almost giving little to their demands i.e tamper with the quran that is how uh, uh, pressure was put on the messenger of allah that's why they say bring us a different quran or make some change to it allah tells the messenger say to them it is not for me to change it on my own i only follow what is revealed to me I fear if I were to disobey my Lord and temper with the Quran or add to it or do something to it, the punishment of a tremendous day on Judgment Day. On another surah, the third one, and I will, I'm going to stop here because I can cite here over a hundred and more uh, yet from the Quran where Allah commands, tells, orders the messenger to follow only the Quran. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, that is Surah number 5, Messenger, convey everything revealed to you from your Lord. If you do not, then you have not delivered his message. That's why the Messenger never ever withheld anything from the Quran. Pay attention, Allah says what has been revealed to you from your Lord. And Allah talks about the Quran. The ayat, my sisters, are countless, and my brothers, of course, are countless in this subject. And the messenger cannot legislate anything from his own head. And no one can claim that Allah gave his messenger some authority to legislate or change Allah's law without any authority from the Quran. You see, Allah alone rules Nobody else rules besides Allah. Because if someone says someone else rules with Allah, then that is pure shirk. And I said shirk is uh, 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 having somebody share with you. It's, it's you share power with somebody else. Giving authority to someone other than Allah to legislate in the religion of Allah is something that Allah hasn't said uh, can happen. And Allah considers that as shirk. 
association with Allah. Look at what Allah says here in, again. In Surah Yusuf, in, in Surah, so the ayah number 40, Yusuf tells his people, it is Allah who legislates. He has commanded you that you worship none but him. That is the upright deen, the upright way of life. But most people do not know. Pay attention. It is only Allah who legislates in this Islam. In another ayah in Surah Al-Kahf, people read it every Friday and suddenly nobody pays attention. Allah says, وَلَا يُشْرِكُ فِي حُكْمِهِ أَحَدًا And he, i.e. Allah, does not split his ruling with anyone. And that is the ayah number 26. Notice that Allah says he does not split his ruling. Today, tomorrow, and forever, Allah never ever splits his ruling with anybody. He didn't do it before and he's not doing it now and he will never ever do it. In another ayah, Allah says, again, Allah establishes an eternal law that can never ever change. Not today, not in the hereafter. Look at this and Allah says in Surah Al-A'raf, that is the surah number uh, 7 and the ayah is 54. Your Lord, Allah is going to introduce himself to us. He goes, your Lord is Allah. The caretaker of this world is Allah. Okay, good thing. Oh, and why should we uh, obey you? Then Allah says, It is him who created the heavens and the earth in six days. Of course, nobody created them with Allah, right? Cool. And when the, uh, the, that creation was done, Allah established himself as the only authority. So, Mustawa al arsh It is him who causes the night to cover the day. And then the day swiftly pursues the right. Okay? So it's, it's a cycle. The day and the night uh, chase each other. And then Allah says, It is him who created the sun, the moon, and the stars, making them all subservience, all obedience to his command. And then he says, Ergo, isn't it the creation and the command his? So blessed be Allah, the Lord of the universe. Of course, he created everything alone. He didn't ask anyone to help him in the creation. Why should he ask humans to share power of authority with him? Doesn't the creation and the authority, the command, be his and his alone? There are many, many ayat in the Quran where Allah establishes that only him is the sole legislator in Islam. Hence, this Islam is Allah's religion. Since that is the case, he is the only one who has the authority to say what goes in Islam, what doesn't. Now oh, I like that, what doesn't. Okay, what goes and what doesn't. Okay, his world is this creation is Allah's creation and so is judgment today. Allah says in the Quran, Inna Allaha yahkumu ma yurid. Indeed, Allah commands what He wants. And this is again Surah Al-Ma'idah, that's Surah number 5, and the ayah is number 1. Pay attention. Allah didn't say, Inna Allaha wa Rasulahu yahkumani ma yuridan. Allah did not say that indeed Allah and his messenger both command what they want. Of course not, never ever. Allah says, Inna Allaha, it is only Allah, Yahkumu, who issues the command what he wants. Since Allah didn't mention no one can share the power with him, no one can say that Allah has revealed something out of the Quran to the messenger, no one. But anyhow, the truth of the matter is this. The singing of the Qur'an has its roots not in, uh, in our Qur'an, but rather in the people of the book. You see, when in the third century they were designing this Islam that we have today, they saw the Jews, when they read the Torah, they sing it. They saw when the Christians sing the gospel, they sing it. We Muslims, or we the believers, you see, it's, uh, the old habits die hard. We the believers, when we read the Quran, we're going to just read it as spoken words. That is boring to the ears. The Jews and Christians and, uh, and every other, the, the Sikh, everybody else sings their holy book. 
So uh, if we don't, then we're going to be the, 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 the stickles in the mouth. We're going to be like the, the sore thumb in the air, right? So what did our scholars say? They forced people to sing the Quran when they read it. Not only that, they lied and made the messenger said things that he didn't say. It is not, uh, he is not of us who doesn't sing the Quran. And then, astaghfirullah, because in terms of the hadith, لَيْسَ مِنَّ مَنْ لَمْ يَتَغَنَّ بِالْقُرْآنِ الْغِنَى is music. Is when you sing, is when you sing a song, right? But because when they invented that lie, they used the term singing like in music, the scholars wanted to get out of this trap because on one hand, singing is haram, music is haram, and now you have to sing the Qur'an. And how can you do the two contradictory things, right? Well, they say, no, 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 al-ghina huna is, is just, uh, you, 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 you use some melody, but it must not follow music. And those ignorant don't know that anything follows music. We all speak in the five, in the eight notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, of the music and the, and the sharps and all these things. We all speak within a music. I will tell you, the messenger never ever sang the Quran. He never used any melody. The Quran is the words of Allah. When the messenger recited the Quran loudly to people, he didn't sing it. When it is a question, the messenger would play what Jibreel brought to him from Allah. The, the whole thing is a bogus claim. The whole thing is a hocus pocus. Of course, when they found that, they went now and to prove that the Quran tells people to sing, they lied and they even change the meanings of words to mean that Allah said in the Quran sing impossible Rattil al-Qur'ana tartila never ever meant to sing but here is what it means if I say a platoon in the army you know when they do the march when they do the exhibition and they show the, the power the superpowers they do it like every year I think in the independence day or things like that right okay when you see a platoon walking in such a cadence uh, like uh, robots and the platoon after them walks after cadence and then platoons follow platoons let's say there, there are 10 of them and they walk you see how that is beautiful like the, the distance is kept and how the, the whole harmony and whole discipline right? well that is the tartil the tartil is, is when you are putting one thing right after the other so when Allah says to the messenger رَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ tartila i.e. you follow the teachings of the Qur'an one block at a time. Today you do this and tomorrow you do that and you do this just like you follow the instructions. So basically what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling to the messenger all together, وَرَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ tartila, i.e. follow the instructions of the Qur'an as they exist in al Quran. It's never ever about singing. So, do you need to recite the Quran with the rules? You don't need to. Just read as you like because again, at the beginning of Islam, there were no dots, there were no vowels. The Quran the way it is today is completely different to the Quran that existed before in writings. But when you read it, the, all the writings and all the signs and symbols on the Mus'haf today, on the book of the Quran today, that you find is just fanatics to help you speak the Quran as at the time of Rasulullah and even back then they deferred. So you are safe. You don't need to sing Al-Quran. As a matter of fact, if you don't sing Al-Quran, you are closer to the word of Allah than turning the Quran into a melody. Before I close this thought, I want to say this. Sheikhs come from Egypt and it's a poor country there and people study to become sheikhs just like they would want to study to become engineers. Usually those who cannot carry it in medicine or engineering or architecture or things like that chose the easy way to become a sheikh. It doesn't take anything uh, in Egypt to become a sheikh or Saudi Arabia or whatever, right? And these people, especially those who learn the, the rules of the Quran because that's their livelihood. If they can, if, if, if everybody can read the Quran according to what they can and things like that, these sheikhs will not have uh, a way of making money. That's why they charge you to teach you the Quran and all these things. There is nothing to teach from the Quran. The Quran and is a speech and we have different intonations we have different tones we have dialects and all that kind of stuff 
all what Allah wants from you is when Allah says, uh, do not lie, Allah is not expecting you to read it in some perfect way. Allah wants you not to lie. Either you know how to recite it properly or you don't know how to recite it properly. It's not that. The Quran is a very easy book that has been made easy by Allah and overcomplicated by humans. All four, as Allah said it in the Quran, hasadan min andi anfusihim. It's an envy, it's a territorial, it's an agenda, it's school of thought, but the Quran is a lot simpler and a lot easier. When you follow the Quran, your Islam is 99% easier than what you are doing today. Another question that we'd like to ask is what is the purpose of singing the Quran or reading it with a melody? For example, when Allah talks about how to divide the inheritance, why should we sing that? What's the purpose of singing? Is it to soften the heart of people? If that is the case, why is music haram? Then why do we not want the uh, people to listen to music? You see, because the reason they made music haram is, and it's not, but they made it haram so that they they say it doesn't compete with the Quran, but that's not the reason. When Allah talks, for example, yeah, let's take a Sudais, this this villain Imam that has now turned against Islam. But anyhow, let's take this guy. Okay, he reads the Quran monotonously with the same type of voice. Either he talks about hellfire, if he, even if he talks about paradise, even if he talks about how Allah destroyed people, uh, he sings the same voice. How Allah destroyed the people of New just like Allah is talking about himself, just like Allah talks about Jannah, what is the purpose of singing the Quran? I want to know this because we it, it's enough. We don't want to just keep taking what those scholars tell us, what those set of the predecessors. The predecessors are not messengers. They are not prophets. The prophet, the messenger of Allah is dead and Allah has ensured to tell us there is no prophet after him. End of the deal. Finish, finish, finish. So when they say those set of these righteous predecessors, the scholars have said and they have done, and they say it's the sunnah. It's not the sunnah. Rasulullah was not a rock and roll singer. He was not a singer of the Quran. And listen to this. When, for example, yeah, the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he commands us to obey him. Okay, when he says, for example, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, la tulhikum amwalukum wa la awladukum an dhikrillah. This is a command. You can hear in my tone of voice how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us not to put our wealth and our kids in front of obeying Allah because that is going to be extremely dangerous for us and it's going to land us in hot waters. That's fine. Now, if I read it like this, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu la tulhikum it's, it's nothing. You feel the tone of my voice. You will feel sad because I have chosen to make the tone sad but it doesn't do anything to you and I can use the same tone for when I read about how Allah destroyed the people of Nuh and the same tone as when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, show mercy to other people you see the question is why do we have to sing it why do we have to look like the Jews and Christians when they sing their books no my sisters and my brothers the Quran as Allah said in, uh, in the Quran itself as Allah has spoken is a book to to ponder upon take the information and apply it when was the last time that you told your child my son please go read your textbooks for tomorrow you have some exams when was the last time you talked to give instruction to your kid like this you never do it right well guess what the same thing and, oh God, I can go on and on and on and on. When you were at the university, when you were at school, when the teacher was teaching you something, math, geography, history, whatever it is, when was the last time the teacher said to you, student, 
England is in the upper part of Europe, and underneath it is France. It doesn't go like that. You don't learn like that. Okay? You would say England is at the top part of Europe, underneath it is France, to the left is this, to the left of that. They make this much money, they are like this, they are like that. But that is what it is. That's what teaching is all about. You see, they turn the Quran into some melody, and we now are concentrating more on the melody than on the text of the Quran. And this is the curse. This idea has not worked for the last 1400 years. It, uh, the, the Quran never softened the hearts of people just because of the melody. Our history is a very bloody one. It's civil wars after civil wars, after attacks, after killings. And people have always listened to this man-made idea of singing the Quran and it has not brought any fruits at all. Why? Because fruits are taken from studying the Quran, not rock and rolling it. It's, it's, it's incredible how we believers don't use our minds to look in the book of Allah to find out what Allah wants from me. Why do I have to take what Allah wants from me from humans when Allah said it in the Quran? It doesn't make sense. And how I stop here. I pray to Allah this answers the question and explains furthermore as to uh, the title of the, the talk. Should we know all the rules and should we sing uh, read the Quran in melody? No, we don't do it. Let's leave the Jews and the Christians sing the Quran and we speak the word of Allah and follow the teachings that's more important than having a Michael Jackson's like uh, type of voice with which you recite Al Quran. Again, this is your brother Abdul Salam and I pray to Allah that you be well and until my next talk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.